What's up guys? We are back with the second of the two early release Mythic Legions Wasteland figures today. We're taking a look at Purplor. That's that's right. He's got what? Three R's in his name. So you got to say it like that. So we've of course got this guy here in the standard Legions packaging. Same stuff we always see. Collector friendly. Take him out. Put him back in. No muss, no fuss. You can see him there in the window. Bio for this guy on this side of the insert. And then the back of the packaging has that same artwork we've seen since AOD, as well as a bit of a write-up of Mythos. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull this purple guy out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our purple lore figure. Something I've really been looking forward to, and it's not just because I have Kauros to pair him with, it's because I have a fondness for Panthor, which is obviously what the homage is to here. And I just have a lot of fond memories of that toy as a kid. And I've always liked the big purple evil cat, so, you know, we got a big purple evil cat man to talk about today. This guy does, of course, have a few display options. I've got all the stuff on him now, because this is, you know, this is how he's kind of intended to be displayed based on his name and bio. So we've got all the stuff that makes him the big cat man on, which includes the extra piece around the neck. And then of course you got the pauldrons as well, which are kind of necessary for him like that. Otherwise he looks really goofy. So as far as articulation goes, he is identical to Kauros really. Uh, and of course he does have kind of the same limitations, mostly around the head. So he can look up a little bit and he can kind of bobble up and down. Any, any too much further and you're going to start to get in the territory, the head's going to pop off. You've got a little bobble and then you've got rotation as well. You've got arms that can go out out, and then they rotate. My shoulder joint is really, really stiff, so watch out for yours. You've got rotation and hinge at the elbow, rotation at the wrist, or forearm rather, hinge and then rotation. You've got a 1.0 style body, so you've got a ball peg at the waist, so all the way around, backwards, forward, side to side, all that jazz. He kicks out and forward and backward, and then you can rotate at the thigh. You've got a hinge and rotating knee, and then you've got rotation, rocker, and hinges down at those ankles. So all normal stuff. And then you've got the ball jointed tail here. Again, watch out any, you know, you kind of press it too far and it'll, it'll start to pop out because it is just a little small ball peg. But he does move around, I mean, exactly how you would expect for a Legion's figure. And if you're familiar with the Minotaurs or Kauros, you know what to expect as far as the cat guys. Of course, you know what I'm going to say next. The main draw for me when it comes to this figure is the look. It's the overall aesthetics for this guy, and I mean, I just I just love it. I think it's fantastic. It combines two very kind of specific things when it comes to Panthor. So you've got the purple cat guy. So you've got the purple body, which is just your standard bare-chested uh, humanoid body, but then you've got the purple collar, and then of course you've got the purple head and the tail, but it also has armor that evokes a very Motu Classics look and gives you that kind of teal blue color, which works really well for Purplore here when it comes to comparing him to, you know, Vintage or Classics Panthor. And of course, I think some of this stuff, specifically his his armor choices here, goes a long way to actually bridging the gap and making him a good pair with Celtis. So you've got your Skeletor homage, and then you've got your Panthor homage, and you kind of have a nice little pair. So this guy is, I mean, for all intents and purposes, he is kind of basic because of that. He is a very, very bare-chested figure with bare thighs, mostly bare arms, but he does look so striking. There's a lot of figures in this line that don't have a lot of exposed skin. So the ones that do, for me, they usually stand out a little bit more. But then, of course, you have this guy wearing really bright green-blue armor with bright, saturated purple skin. And you can't not, you know, just be drawn to it. It looks fantastic. I love the armor choices here because he's not supposed to be the nicest of guys. So they gave him some of the more evil style armor, the really big angled pauldrons. I'm a huge fan of these. And I love these kind of dark knight style gauntlets and gloves and the shin guards and the boots. Another thing to kind of draw them together with Celtus a little bit as well. And then of course, when it comes down to just the real reason you want to look at this thing, the colors are incredibly saturated. The armor is very metallic as a nice sheen you can i'm sure you can pick up on that and it, it's a simple look it's a simple color scheme blues a blue green color and then you've got purple but it works so well and for those that are into this for the motu tribute you know exactly what's going on you got your little tail here which works really really well it's it's a simple thing but it's a little change that uh, makes this figure kind of come to life a little bit more and it sells the illusion of this guy being a big cat man of course, nothing sells the illusion of this guy being a big cat man more than the head. And the head is fantastic, just like with Kauros. I mean, it's the exact same thing. It's just got a simple purple color scheme with a little bit of gloss for the nose, some really, really small beady 
green eyes, and it just works. And then, of course, it sits on top of the collar that gives him a little bit more armor and then gives him that huge hunch look. So it makes him look like he's a beast man, just like how Beast Man in Motu is always kind of hunched over. It works really well to make him look a little bit beefier from the shoulder and trap area up, but it just gives you that idea that he's more than a man outside of the fact that, of course, he's got a big giant cat head on his shoulders, but it helps to bridge the gap between this large feline head and this really muscular standard human body. Now, as far as accessories goes, Purple Ore comes with kind of a standard assortment for a character that does come with actually a lot of stuff in general, because he does have options as far as being displayed. So you've got the cat head, you've got the collar, you've got the tail, you've got the pauldrons that we've already talked about, but you can, just like with Kauros, you can change this guy up entirely, and you can just make him into a Purple Orc. So someone who doesn't really maybe care about the Motu aspect of this figure, or just wants a horde of Purple Orcs, you've got a standard unmasked Purple Orc head with some great coloring. Again, you've got those green eyes, you've got some exposed teeth. Just a fantastic sculpt, and orcs just work in every damn color, really, so I'm really excited to be able to have this option for this figure, and when I get my second one, when the actual pre-order arrives, I'll be able to have one of each. Of course, this guy does have a little better articulation. He can look up a little bit more, he can look down, and then there's really nothing getting in the way of him, but that's just the nature of him not having that big collar on. Beyond that, though, he has all kind of the sander stuff, so you've got your strap, as is usually the case. We've got this big shield here, which is done up in kind of a coppery brown color with green accents. This is stuff that we see a lot with uh, the elves, and it's in some of the elven uh, weapon packs, I believe. It's kind of weird to see it with an orc, but it actually works pretty well, and the colors contrast quite nicely. We've got this very, very savage-looking goblin-style blade, really, if I've ever seen one. The one with kind of the sawtooth on it, and you've got the spikes on the backside, so it's kind of like a club and a blade. And then you've got this big monster here. Uh, we've seen this before with figures like uh, Morgolith, for example, so keeping with that kind of copper-brown color scheme, but with the huge blade with the runes on it, silver with a little black inlay design. So a good array of accessories, but just in general, a good array of weaponry for this figure, however you want to display them, but then you've got a million different options when it comes to how you want to kind of display this guy. You can have the collar on, collar off, orc, cat head. You can have one pauldron, two pauldrons, no pauldrons, however you want. You do have a, a number of different display options when it comes to this type of character. So overall, this is a real winner for me, and it's for a number of reasons, really. Uh, some of them are more subjective than others, specifically just the fact that I love Panthor as a big purple cat, and I think they translated it really well into figure form here, and a lot of that comes down to the color choices used on that body, but also the way they contrasted it with a very Panthor-style armor scheme. So I think it works really, really well on a few levels. You've got a lot of options when it comes to how you want to display this figure, just from a parts add-on type of perspective, and then he comes with some cool accessories as well. So if you're big into the Motu tributes in this line, you're in for a real treat. If you're into this line for maybe some wacky colored uh, figures, specifically a very, very purple orc, you're in for a real treat. There's a lot to enjoy here, uh, depending on how you want to display this guy. So no matter what, this guy was a winner for me, and I can't wait to get a second one so I can have both versions. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Wasteland Purple Orc figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.